Hi, welcome in the first of uh, my series on spiritual knighthood. Um, I've earlier made a, a, a workshop, which I also put on YouTube, about uh, spiritual warriorship. This is more about the techniques you can use to fight energetic battles. But uh, a spiritual knight needs more than just a skill in fighting. He really needs to develop himself. And knighthood is not so much just development of fighting skills. It is really a path of self-development. And uh, there are many knightly codes, many rules which a knight should follow according to chivalry or different orders. And every little order had its own set of rules. Some of the sets of rules were very complex, more than 200. Uh, but I would like to talk about some of the general principles which apply to many of these knightly orders. Uh, the first principle I would like to talk about is um, that a knight should defend his tradition. So this goes both for Christian knights but also for warriors who follow another uh, system or another ideology. To be a knight uh, means that you are not just a fighter but you also fight for something. And ultimately you don't fight just for yourself or for your boss, but you fight for the whole of humanity. And this is what it means to fight for your tradition, to protect your tradition. Um, because as a knight you can have a faith or an ideal. And that ideal is in a way to better to the betterment of mankind. It is to serve you as a path of self-development, but it also uh, exists to serve others as a path of self-development. So to defend the tradition, as is the duty of the knight, is mainly to defend a religion. And with religion I mean a method of reconnection, re-ligare, reconnection. And uh, that means that we as an incarnated human try to reconnect with the higher parts of our being or with higher principles, higher ideals, gods, goddesses, the creator himself, angels, uh, enlightened masters, can be many things uh, which are included in your religion. Uh, but to reconnect, to have this religion, um, requires a set of steps. So, and depending on the religion, these steps are different. So part of it can be prayer, it can be meditation, it can be physical exercises, uh, it can be certain rules of conduct, vows of poverty. Um, but this set of practices, uh, if you combine it and you use them all together in the correct order, they form a path. They form a stair, you can ascend to a higher consciousness. And it is the duty of the knight to protect the stairway itself. And uh, so it should in one way be preserved, because if nothing is known of the path, then nobody can follow it. So that means that you have to pass on the teachings, or to write down the teachings, or transfer the teachings, or protect the people who yeah, uh, carry the teachings with them. So the priests or the priestesses who keep the tradition alive, they should be protected, they should be supported. And these are what is part of the knightly code to protect and defend the tradition. It also means that you have to defend the tradition not just from enemies outside who want to disrupt the carriers or destroy the books, but also from within, from misinterpretation or abuse of the tradition. Um, because any tradition is always under attack. Um, a tradition is basically an incarnation of an ideal, of a principle. And this ideal or principle can become crystallized, become, become unspiritual, become worldly. So any rule, any principle uh, can be misinterpreted or misconstrued. Um, so it doesn't serve its original purpose as a stairway to a higher consciousness or to get in contact with a higher being, or to for self-improvement. Uh, any rule can become a hindrance. Um, so any rule is in a way made 
to govern those who cannot govern themselves. So if you don't know what to do and you have no self-control, you need somebody else to tell you what to do, to explain to you what to do, what is the next step, so you can reach a higher consciousness and ultimately you can learn self-governance. You can gain a maturity. Um, so every rule is a temporary rule. It applies on a certain level of your spiritual path. And the higher you advance, the fewer rules are necessary for you, for your spiritual advancement. But you will find that you keep to the principles of the rules inherently, because you've internalized them. But because you have a greater insight, a greater wisdom of how to serve the principle, you can find other ways to serve the principle. And um, also because you gain a better control over your life, over your energy body, a more direct contact with guidance from the divine world. Um, it is very important that you don't uh, confuse the means with the end. Because the, the goal of any religion is to gain this higher consciousness, to gain direct guidance from the Holy Spirit or from Ascended Masters or whatever the higher beings are in your tradition. And any rules and strictures and um, help you to do that. But they're not the goal. So your purpose is not to live according to the rules. Your purpose is to use the rules to improve yourself. And um, to keep this tradition intact and from being misinterpreted, uh, it's also the duty of a knight to see who needs the rules, who the rules should apply to and who the rules should not apply to. And this is part of justice, because as we work on ourselves, we gain a certain position, we gain a certain maturity in the eyes of the higher powers. And we should be treated according to our position, according to our, the fruits of our labor. And this is a principle of justice, which I will speak about in another video. So the defense of the tradition also uh, requires the interpretation of the rules, not just the following of the rules, or just, not just the defending of the rules. It is not about blind faith. It is about having walked the path, having used rules to your own benefit, and helping other people to apply them to their benefit and explaining it to them. So a knight is not just a fighter, he's also an example, a teacher of how to live a spiritual life, how to reconnect and how to gain strength and stability and harmony out of that connection with the higher principles, with the higher powers. So this is what it means for a knight to defend the tradition. Thank you for listening.